What's going on here gamers, here we are back with some more of The Ascent and today I'm going to try and give you a guide that may help a few of you out if you're not sure about the damage types in the game. So if you want to know how to up your damage on your weapons and what damage type affects what, then stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon, I'll bring you all the latest and greatest in hints, tips, guides and builds, and just some fun gameplay and reviews of some of the upcoming games on Xbox as well. But for today I'm here to show you how you can get the best out of your weapons and how you can do a lot of extra damage against those tougher enemies or just to know what damage types are going to do what. So first and foremost, there are a few weapons out there that are kind of classed as unique. They will do certain things that other weapons can't. For example, you'll get one that absolutely decimates people by shooting at a saw blade. Or another one, like the Crazy Maker, may ricochet bullets around everywhere. Not all weapons can do this, it's kind of a unique thing just on those guns. So sometimes reading the descriptions will help you to know if there's any added perks and such on a certain weapon. So in general, as you level up, as you progress through the storyline, you'll be finding weapons that you really enjoy playing. If you want to use a weapon a little bit further on, you're probably going to find that upgrading it is the best way to increase its damage. If you go to the icon just over here, so it's exactly the same for Cluster 13, anyone that's got one of these hammers is a gunsmith. They will be able to upgrade your weapons all the way to a maximum of level 10. So if I go over to here and show you for example this one, the ABR Commander, because I've upgraded it quite a bit, it's turned to yellow. If I manage to upgrade it maximum all the way to 10, it's going to turn purple, meaning it's kind of end game ready. Really nice, really powerful, and it means you'll hit things a lot harder. One thing to note, it takes a lot of resources, so make sure that you've either got a lot handy, you've been farming some, or you just know you're going to be using this weapon well into the game. Next up, and one of the better ways to increase your damage, is by going to your skills. Click on that, go down to the second one, and as long as you can put it into your build, putting up your critical hit rate will mean you'll have a lot more chance of doing those crits, doing that big crit damage. Obviously, that will raise your damage through the roof for your weapons, so the higher you can get that, and you can raise it all the way to a maximum of 20, meaning you'll have 1 in 5 chance of getting a crit, and just do a lot more damage than you would have normally without it. Right, so if we go over to our weapons, and the first one I've got here, if you have a little look, it shows you that there's four actual main damage sources. They are Ballistic, Digital, Fire, and Energy. Now, Ballistic is kind of your bog standard normal bullet types. It can hit really, really hard. It's not going to do any kind of added effects, but it tends to have quite a high base damage and it works really well against most normal enemies. However, some enemies it will not be as effective against. So, for example, if you're fighting against mechs or anything of that kind, it's not going to do any additional damage and it's not going to hit them anywhere near as hard as it probably should do. Next up, and you've got Digital. To be perfectly honest, I've not come across anything that does any digital damage in the game yet, except for one augmentation, which is this one just over here, the IO Converter. Weapons, projectiles and explosions now deal digital damage only. This mod will convert all your damage output to aggressive cyber strikes, which can quickly overwhelm vulnerable enemies. Now, I must admit I haven't tried this as much as some of the other stuff, but from what I can gather, this tends to do the most damage that you can actually get on robots. So if you put this on a really nice high powered energy weapon and then you activated your IO converter, you will do ridiculous damage. It really does tend to tear apart those mechanical enemies and I think it may be the best source of damage in the game for those tougher robots and such. But it does cost you an augment slot and you've got to work out whether or not you'll be able to kind of put it into your build. Sometimes it may well be a thing that if you're going into a certain area, you may want to swap out what you've got on and chuck this on instead, just so you're doing that extra damage to the mechs. And next up, and we've got fire. Fire is just ridiculously good to have on your build. If you're going to be facing those kind of fleshy enemies, anything that's not a mech, anything that's human based or animal based or mutant based or anything that can burn, that will do a ridiculous amount of damage to them. 
Also, it doesn't really tell you anywhere, but it does damage over time. As you can see in the background, I'm run away, not shooting, but the enemies will still fall over and they will still die from that damage over time effect, making flames pretty much the best way to take out any fleshy enemies. And last but definitely not least, if you have a little look, in the background again, you've got that energy weapon. Energy weapons is a great, great weapon to have as a secondary if you're going to be in an area where there's kind of a lot of mechs or there's a lot of mechanical bosses. Anything big is really good to have an energy weapon as it does a lot of damage, whereas ballistic just won't knock them for six like you'd hope it would. If you're playing solo, one good thing to remember, if you pause your game to have a little look through your inventory or do anything along with that, it does pause at the same time. Nothing's going on in the background. If you're playing multiplayer, I would imagine it definitely does and you're gonna fall over. But if you're on your own, just pause the game, go through your inventory, change weapons to suit the area more. So for example, if you're fighting a lot of robots, definitely have a ninja weapon on, it will help you in abundance. If you're going into an area with a lot of fleshy targets, chucking on a flamethrower can mean that they can't even reach you most times, or if they do, they're going to fall over shortly after. Now, other than the four damage types, there are a few things that come into effect as well. For example, when you're hitting enemies at certain times with certain weapons, they will also have an orange bar underneath their health bar. This basically means how much you're doing to them in order to stagger them. Once that bar's gone, they'll be staggered and they'll do a little fall back animation, meaning you've got a bit of reprise, you've got a bit of time to yourself, or you can just lay into them and try and finish them off. Now, another thing that tends to happen in this game is that you can impair their movements a little bit. Now, one other thing to note is there are such things as effects going on as well. Say, for example, you're using a rocket launcher, you'll get a slight area effect, meaning things will get hit in an area and it can really help to take on mobs. Also, it does a bit of an impair effect. It definitely seems to impair their movement, very much so from the little blast effect. Also, sometimes the exact same thing can happen with your energy weapons. But the best impairing effect that I found is from knockback itself. So if you have a little look on some of the weapons, and in particular I would definitely say this applies to snipers more so than anything else, but some things like the miniguns also have really good knockback. But if you have a little look on this, it has 200 knockback on this sniper. It's the highest I've seen so far, again there may be something out there I've missed, but the higher the knockback means at certain times enemies won't even be able to get to you. You can really, really easily hit them and kind of stagger them and, like it says, knockback, meaning that they're not going to make their way towards you. Really, really effective if you're trying to keep one enemy away or you're trying to knock them for six, make sure they don't get you in the first place. Now last, but definitely not least, is piercing. Now again, I couldn't find any information on this, but from what I can tell, piercing pretty much negates their armour. It really does hit some of the tougher enemies, especially the big guys, the elites, the bosses. Piercing seems to be the way forward. If you've got this on, you can absolutely wreak havoc. I believe it's why snipers tend to hit so hard, because it negates at the very least some of their armour, or maybe all of it. I'm not entirely sure, as I couldn't find any stats anywhere for it, but it definitely negates some of it, and means that you'll pack an absolute punch against those really tough enemies. Obviously, if you've got the correct weapon type, so for example an energy one for those mechs, or a standard one works fine for fleshies and such, it will help out even more. But it's one of the main reasons why this augment right here, the neutron beam, is my go-to for absolute boss damage. So, as you can see, a continuous energy beam which pierces armour and causes massive damage. Again, it's got pierce on it, same as like I said with the sniper, and it means you'll do an absolute abundance of damage, and it works really well against tougher, tougher targets and such. Right, all you gamers, hopefully I've got all of that right. Some of it's completely improvised because I couldn't find anything out about it. But as far as I can tell from testing, playing the game, and absolutely getting hit a lot and falling over, I think that's pretty much sums up how things are. If I've made any boo-boos, or if you've got any input yourself, then chuck it in the comments. But as always, guys and girls, full things gaming, full things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.